Now I want to walk you through real quick how to set up a new campaign in the settings that I suggest you use. It's real simple. You log into your account. You can go under campaigns at the top. Then you can find the option to add a campaign. Obviously, this is the test account I set up. So if you have a new account, you won't have anything in it. But you just click this red button, add campaign plus campaign. When you click that, you're going to get a drop down list of things. All we want here is search network only. We don't want anything else. So we just want the second option, search network only. We click that. Up here, campaign name, it lets us name the campaign. Now, I'm just going to name this test campaign number two, only because of this test account with the other one we have. Uh, but you need to actually use some kind of naming convention that'll help you with your reports. Please go back and see the earlier lesson in this module about how to structure your account because I talk about how to do different naming conventions and why it's important to use some kind of you know, group of labels or things where you'll know when you look at reports and you're going to have hundreds of campaigns eventually and lots of different you know, keywords and ads that are running. You have to know what each campaign means and what it's targeting and why you're doing it for opt-ins or sales, etc. So of course, you'll want to name that something that makes sense to you. Anyways, after you name the campaign, type search network only. That's what we just picked under the red button. Leave it there. You can put standard for the option choices instead of all features. You can change this inside the campaign later, but just leave it on standard. It says or load settings from existing campaigns. You can leave that. That's for the display network. The next area is very important. It says networks. We see that Google search network has a green check, but under that it says include search partners and that's checked. You want to uncheck that box. If you leave it checked, that means you're going to have your ads show up on other sites outside of Google search engine, other search sites and things that Google has added to their network. We don't want that at all. So we only want when people search in Google for things so we can control that. Now, once you've exhausted all the traffic from all your keywords and you fine tuned everything and you've optimized everything, you can set up new campaigns and come back and target these search partner networks and then try to test those but it's going to be lower quality traffic. So I suggest you don't have that checked at all, at least not until you've exhausted every possible campaign with just Google search uh, before you move on to expand it. So then under devices, there's nothing here to set. Under locations, this is where you set location, US and Canada. I suggest you break things down right away by singular countries. So you're going to set up a new campaign. I would put on the United States to start with for whatever those keywords are going to be. And then you can come in here, Set up another campaign, the same, make it just for Canada, and then set up you know, the same keywords under that, and then set up you know, Australia, set up the same keywords under that. So you're going to use the same keywords and types of ad groups, even the same ads if you want, to target different countries, but you'll want to separate the countries by campaigns. Don't just combine them together. But let me show you real quick here, when you go to set location, the power of being able to really get to a granular level. If you're targeting states in the United States, let's say we're selling camping gear, we know our micro-targeted kind of demographics and options are, you know, more people in like Colorado and Utah, like places where there are mountains and trails and things. So we could go in here and we could type in Colorado and we can add just the state of Colorado. So not only can you do a campaign just for people in the U.S., you could do a campaign for the same keywords, but you could do it by state. So you could do just Colorado. Now, if you're picking a bunch of states or you're even picking the United States, so let's say we're going to pick the United States here. But okay, first of all, if we're going to do Colorado, you come over here and click add and it would add Colorado to whatever locations are targeted in this campaign. But let me show you something else. Let's say we're just going to add the United States. So we're going to add United States. And you might be thinking, well, how come up here you just didn't click United States? Well, it's because of what I'm about to show you. If you're just going to do all, all US, you can have that clicked, all US. But by doing it under this way where it says, let me choose, we've added the United States manually, but now watch what we can do. We can type in the state of Nebraska. Nebraska comes up here, but instead of adding, let's say we know that no one in Nebraska buys our camping gear, so we can click the one next to it, exclude. So it's like a negative keyword, but it's kind of a negative geographic location for this campaign. So if we set up this new campaign now and save our settings, we're going to run our ads to anyone that searches our keywords anywhere in the United States, no other countries, but anywhere in the United States, except if someone searches for those keywords in Nebraska, because we know they're not good buyers and the conversions aren't good. So we don't even want to waste our time or our click-through rate showing ads to people in that state. So you can exclude by state, by city, by county, by, by area for nearby areas. 
it's very, very powerful what you can do with uh, Google AdWords. So if you're doing any kind of local campaigns or real estate things or anything like that, you can really come in here and really tightly focus on one specific little area where you want your ads to, to be shown and not anywhere else. Well, we can click remove all and remove all to kill the United States and to kill Nebraska out of that little list that we just set up. And let's just go back and we'll highlight United States as that, you know, that radio button here. So then we're going to come down. Languages, just let you set the language. We're going to leave it on English. Bid strategy, we're going to choose maximize clicks. I talked about in a previous lesson, we want to let Google maximize our clicks, at least initially, because they're going to get us the most traffic. So we can lower our bids later if we want to have more tight controls on the profit that we make from those clicks from that, you know, particular campaign. But for now, we're going to leave it on maximize clicks. And we're going to, for max CPC bid limit optional, we're going to leave it blank because we don't want to even mess with Google at all. Under budget, I recommend you do a budget of at least $100 a day for a campaign. You can do $10, $20, $50. But I would do 100 let it run a day, and then cut it off if you're not going to spend more on that campaign rather than trying to do like $5 for the campaign because you're not going to get much data and Google isn't going to show your ad much. So you have to kind of put it within reason. I tell people to set you know budgets for campaigns at about $100 a day. But that's for a campaign that's going to be targeting some you know pretty important keywords, and you know you really you really feel you're going to be able to grow your business from those keywords and from that traffic. So then you want to set your bid you know at a decent amount to at least start getting the data. Again, you have full control over this. You can set it to whatever you want. You can do some testing. But if you don't set it at a high enough budget, they're not going to show your ads enough for them to get clicks. And for average clicks being you know fifty cents a dollar, dollar fifty two dollars for most markets, if you do ten dollars. It says, okay, I can only show this person's ads enough to get about 10 clicks. And then it tries to think of a 24 hour period and then it really spreads your ads out. And then it's hard to get that data. So the higher the budget you can afford, the better, at least initially, because you'll be able to get the data faster. Down at the bottom, it says ad extensions and it has different boxes to click. We're going to leave those all blank. I'm going to explain ad extensions uh, coming up here in an upcoming lesson. But for now, just leave it blank. When you're done, click save and continue. And then you're finished with the campaign. Now it's going to try to get you to add a new ad group immediately. Uh, if you already know what you're going to add, then you can move right into this to add your new ad group. But if not, you can just click save and finish. And that'll bring you back to kind of your main campaign area. And we're logged inside this new campaign right away. And then we can go in and edit the ad group and start adding uh, keywords and ads and everything else. But that's how you set up a new campaign. Those are the options I suggest that you start with to create a new campaign.